back from the beginning when we when we first all turned silver. And so I think Sean's followed our journeys in doTERRA. And we're very lucky at the moment to be able to have Sean in this country. He's been at the main office for a couple of weeks. And so Sean is head of all the account managers in Europe. And I think he has lots of other responsibilities too. So we're very, very lucky to have him talk to us. He's, whenever I've spoken to him, he's so fast on knowing everything about placements and strategy and everything. So we're very lucky to have him. Is there anything else I've missed, Sean, about you? I'm sure there's lots, but... You know. <laughs> No, that's why I talk to people from the UK. They say all these nice things about me that aren't true. So, <laughs> so that's why I talk to you guys. So, oh, thank yeah, you for no, that's it. Yeah, looking forward to talking tonight to see what we, what we've got with regards to questions and structures and what Nathan's got, got questions for us. So, looking forward yeah. to it. Yes, and um, I think is there anybody that's got a particular question at the moment while we're waiting for Nathan to come on? No, I'm, Are you ready? Okay, brilliant. And maybe everybody mute as well. Everybody mute themselves because there was a bit of noise in the last one. Okay. Let me just. I'll just mute. I'll mute everybody, and then I'll unmute you, Sean, and then people can unmute themselves. So, if, um, if you just want to unmute yourself, Sean. Then you come on. Okay. So, thank you everyone for coming on tonight. Um, got famous Sean Price. Um, now, I just wanted to cover quickly, I know a lot of you, um, are silvers and gold, people going for silver and gold, will probably understand what the difference between a wholesale customer and a wellness advocate is. But I just wanted to clarify it because it is vital for getting placements right. So I just wanted Sean just to cover also a customer wellness advocate quickly. Is that all right, Sean, if you cover that again? Oh, of course. Yeah, so so again, the biggest difference is gonna be the, the fact that a wholesale customer cannot have a downline. That's really what's gonna change it, right? So they got, they have the back office, they have access to place orders, they get the discount that the wellness advocate gets. Um, same discount the wellness advocate receives. Some of you guys have been around for a while, so you know that this is a fairly new thing, right? Um, coming up on a year or so. Um, and so again, we had, yeah, we had other options before, so we feel like this one's a pretty good option for customers. Um, and uh, uh, for people that just want to learn about the oil, plus it has a pretty awesome strategic uh, benefit when it comes to placements and so forth. So biggest difference is wellness advocates can build, can have downlines, can earn commissions. Well, our uh, wholesale customers cannot. Um, they rather, they're just there to, to learn about the product, use the product, uh, more of what we would call a user, right? Than a builder or a sharer. Yeah. What are the stats, Sean, at the moment? How many in, in Europe, what are they percentage wise of how many wellness advocates and how many are wholesale customers? Yeah, yeah. So I would say, again, it's probably a 60-40 ratio is probably what I'm going to go with. Um, I might be a little off on that. It's probably a little higher on the wellness advocate side. Um, so that 60-40 ratio is probably about 60. I would say 60 to 70 percent um, you're going to have wellness advocates and then probably more like a 30 to 40 percent wholesale customers. Um, and that then that will change. We I think it'll change as we move forward, especially as leaders learn um, to use it in the U S it's probably a little higher as far as the percentages go for wholesale customers. Um, it, it has other implications in the U S, um, outside of what we use it for in Europe. Um, and so, but again, in, in Europe, it's probably a 60, 40, and we're probably going to see that continue to, to change where more, more people are as a wholesale customer than they are as a wellness advocate. Um, cause it's very beneficial. And I, you know, I, I, I ask you these questions because I see it that a wholesale customer is 90% of the people we sign up now are wholesale customers. Would you agree, Sean? Yeah, yeah I would agree. And I, and I think there are certain teams that have, have, under, have, have figured out what it means and, and what benefits come from signing up wholesale customers. And so I think, uh, again, I would agree that there are, there, there are a couple of leaders that have picked up on the benefit of doing it. The real cool thing about a wholesale customer is that you can move them again. Okay, so if you're going to upgrade them, the wellness advocate, 
you can then get another one-time move, which is which can, which can be a game changer. You can, if someone wants to build, as you signed up as a wholesale customer, you can then move them into a position in your team that is best for them and best for you. Um, that's why we would suggest that if somebody doesn't want to be do the business or be a wellness advocate straight away, that's absolutely fine. Sign them up as a wholesale customer, even if you definitely. Can. Even if you yeah, think, definitely, especially just to jump in. Sorry, Nathan. Yeah, no, go on, Sean. Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say, just especially with uh, in Indoterra, we've generally seen again. This is pretty general and a pretty big span time span of time, but generally speaking, about three to six months is what we've seen it takes for for somebody to become familiar with the DoTerra product. So, if somebody is gonna build, it generally takes three to six months, and so ninety days gives you that three months. So it's more on the closer end of the three months, obviously. Um, but after that, like Nathan said, you know they they know the oil. So then if they come to you and say, you know what, man, these things are awesome. Like I've had some crazy experiences. They've got cool stories. Um, they're probably going to be able to lock people into doTERRA. So at that point, like Nathan said, you want to be able to place them in a position where it's beneficial, you know? So. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to ask you this one. What do you think is a builder? The team know what we think is a builder, but what do you think is a builder? Oh, that's a good question. I, um, I don't know that I have specifics. I, I think I would go on, uh, you know, a general, a general, um, idea. And I think my general idea is along the lines of what you've got here. You know, again, I, if I'm talking with a leader and I'm strategizing with them, um, I'll generally say something like, you know, what needs to hold at least three to four classes a month. Um, and again, it depends on how aggressive, obviously, if, if we're in a pretty aggressive team, we're having like three to four classes a week, that might be more of what, what we're looking at. But for me, I'm saying, you know what, if you're having three to four classes a month, um, you know, generally probably enrolling, you know, five to, you know, from five to 10 a month, I, I would consider a builder, um, you know, maybe someone that's not as in, as fully going as, as uh, you know, somebody that's still probably got a full-time job and maybe doing it at nights and then like on a Saturday or something to that extent. So, so for me, it's somebody that's, again, teaching classes um, and not necessarily somebody that goes on and says, I'm going to watch all the webinars. I'm going to watch how to build. You know, for me, it's are they holding classes? You know, if, it, if it's a builder and if I want to know if a builder, um, if I enroll them as a wellness advocate and I want to know as quickly as possible, let's say I'm transferring them into a spot, um, then I'm, I'm asking them, hey, you know what? Let's teach a class in your home area. I'll come teach it. You just invite people. Okay. And if they can invite, let's say all of a sudden 10 people show up to the class, they have a pretty good chance of being a builder because that's the hardest part in doTERRA is getting people to classes. And so um, so the business side of things, I think, is fairly easy to, to come to grips with, to understand, to learn. And so I think if you can uh, if you can learn to get people to classes and then close those classes with good success as far as uh, signing people up, I think you're, you know, you're cut out to be a builder along with obviously what you've got here. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah, what you're talking about there is brilliant, Sean. Um, you know, and you're, you're you're talking about there probably a level one builder, aren't you? Like a yeah, yeah, correct, yeah. So more of a somebody that again is is wanting to be full in, um, probably has a little more time. But you, your level two is again probably going to be someone that has more of a full full time job type thing, or even you know that might be even more of a share. Yeah, it probably more is a share, right? Yeah, level two is probably. You know they're putting in ten hours plus a little bit, but um, but yeah, thank you, Sean, for that. That's, that's good. Yeah, of course. Um, okay, so um, I wanted to put in a presidential diamond structure for you guys to follow here. Now this is a bit more complicated, um, but I think we from the beginning followed the presidential diamond structure so that when you were placing people, right now, you were placing them in terms of all your customers go underneath your your foot you know underneath your third level so that you can then start building elites um, would you suggest that sean yeah so i mean the structure it looks like here so yeah you're so are you just showing half of it here yeah that's so just half, half of it. the yeah that's just half of it yeah 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 yeah, definitely. I mean, the biggest thing is is knowing where you're going to place people and having a purpose behind it. A lot of times what we see that, that makes it really tough is people don't really have intentions, right? So they, 
they place somebody on my front line. They're going to be a builder. So I start stacking a bunch of people under them. I get it to 1500 volume. And then that person's like, man, I'm just not sure if I want to be a builder. So then I quit building under that team. I go to the next one. I build another line. So again, to Nathan's point, just have a focus. If my focus is presidential diamond, I've got my six legs. Then I'm structuring under those. I don't keep bouncing and creating new legs and just have a bunch of random legs on my front line or, or structures on my front line. Um, but I'm, I'm looking for a purpose, you know, and the purpose is to, to build elites, which build silvers, which build platinums, which ultimately are going to build uh, presidentials as long as uh, they're in the correct positions. Exactly. And would you start off with, if you wanted to be presidential diamond, for instance, would you do six legs straight away? Um, it would depend on how much I'm going to be able to put into it. If I'm a, if I'm trying to transition from like a full-time job, I'm probably going more of a, you know, more of a diamond type structure um, to start with. And just, just so that I can get money in my pocket. Cause if I want to try and transition out of my full-time job, um, if I just right away have my six legs and I'm trying to build them all at the same time, unless I'm, I'm really, there are people that do it. And so I think it definitely is a possibility, you know, if somebody's driven, but I think a lot of times it can potentially become discouraging because if I'm building all six legs and I'm at silver and I'm stuck at silver for, let's say three years, because I'm trying to get all six of those legs balanced and hitting the same ranks at the same time. Um, potentially I may come discouraged, but, but again, I think it depends on what type of builder, what, what, uh, what my goals are moving forward, you know? And so again, I, I'm, for me, I'm going to solidify things. And that way, when I do hit presidential diamond, I'm not weak and like three of my legs really trying to, you know, trying to duct tape it together, but it's more of a solid would, thing. So I would agree. That kind of thing is really for, a very very few people in the and yeah. probably those people with the right circumstances mm -hmm. um yeah yeah so uh for the guys going for silver this is the structure um do you mind just explaining that structure uh sean to them yeah absolutely yeah so obviously we've got this structure so you is the silver right so we'll call that person you um and then we've got, uh, that person has three elites, right? The assumption is that the, the U holds the enrollment of all three elites. And then uh, each, each leg is going to have 3,000 volume, right? So they've got to be three separate legs. They can't be in the same legs. And so three separate legs. And by default, that's going to be 9,000 OV, right? So you're at least going to be at 9,000 OV with your three separate elite legs. Um, and at that point, you know, obviously building to silver, it's not, it's not, easy i wouldn't say obviously it's, it's a tough deal it's a lot of commitment it takes a lot of hard work um but there's not a lot of structure involved right so it's just three it, it's three elites so i just have to get three thousand volume under each one it doesn't matter where i place them i just have to get them in there so i would say if you're if your goal is to get further on in the company past silver which i think it is you know probably is because uh, you definitely obviously got the potential to pass that um, then you definitely want to have some structure involved. So it's not required, but you definitely want to start structuring at that point. Um, you know, for per, two executives per elite, maybe even three legs per elite with the elites help. And so, um, again, it's just a structure. More of this is more structure uh, as far as three elites plus just volume, not so much structure under the elites. And so, um, again, I would, I would encourage to look at structure as you move forward, but it's not a part of the silver, um, ranks. So. Okay, let's, let's just move on to gold. Uh, now, this is a gold structure. It gets a little bit more complicated at gold. Um, do you mind just explaining the gold structure, Sean? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And this is why, again, this is why I would focus on structure as I'm going to silver. I wouldn't, a lot of times, um, especially in the U.S., uh, in, earlier, in the early days of, of doTERRA, we really... Um, we had a lot of silvers. They would hit silver and they'd be like, well, I want to go gold now, but they never had any structure, right? They just threw a bunch of people under their elites to get the volume to 3000. And so then when they wanted to go gold, we pretty much had to start over as far as structuring and everything. So as you're going to silver, keep gold in mind, as far as the structure, maybe even platinum in mind, just as far, again, as far as structure is concerned, um, you can see that these people, they're hit these premieres. If you look at the premieres, if you look at their structures, you'll see that they have, each have, to 2,000 to 2, legs. So those 2,000 legs equal an executive, right? Then they have a 1,000 leg. This structure looks great, right? So this, in a perfect world, this is what it's going to look like. 
Um, but doTERRA is definitely not a perfect world and there's probably zero accounts that look like this, although it would be nice. Um, but again, again, so the structure is I'm at the top, I'm a gold. I've got three premieres. Those premieres in order to qualify as a premier have to have at least two, two executives, okay? Which is two legs of 2,000. And then they have to have some extra volume somewhere. So one of the legs might be 3,000 OV plus one leg is 2,000 OV, which gives me the 5,000. So one of the requirements that you'll see there um, is that it has to have 5,000 OV. The premier has to have 5,000 OV plus two executive legs. And so um, if I'm at the top, I've got those three premieres, which each have their executives, some extra volume, um, and that qualifies me as a gold. Uh, thank you, Sean. Um, yeah. Do we have any questions on the structure before we go on to um, earnings of silver and gold? Um, Sophie did have a couple of questions. I wanted to just clarify with you, Sean. Um, uh, she just, Sophie made a comment that um, <clears throat> that empowered success says that you can do the business in five hours a week and people who do that regard themselves as a builder, they hold classes and enroll people. Um, uh, yeah, so basically I think she's saying that uh, because of what we were saying earlier is that a builder does a lot more than that. Um, yeah. you, you consider them a builder, but um, I think she's just saying that um, I think it's just the term builder really, isn't it? You were talking more of a frontline person that wants to go for it, right? Yeah, totally. Well, and, and I think uh, what, what one person calls a builder and what another person calls a builder is going to be different, right? Yeah. So if I'm building my business and I'm bringing people on. Um, it's not that what works for me uh, will definitely work for my builders, right? So my thing might be, you know what, here's what I would expect, you know, if you're going to be a builder. So I, my, my goal is to help them understand what they are. So I'll lay out, here's what a builder looks like. And then they can see, oh yeah, yeah I'm definitely not that. Here's what I can provide. They could definitely turn into a builder. Again, a builder may very well be five hours a week. Definitely. You know, it may even be two hours a week and those two hours, they're enrolling 20 people at two different events or something to that extent you know so they're still a builder um so I, yeah i definitely agree sophie as far as potentially uh it just depends on again like nathan said it's a term right the builder and so it depends on what each of us would potentially call a builder in doTERRA yeah thank you sean it depends on your goals as well so like if you are trying to get to diamond in six months then you're going to need builders that want to do it pretty much full time um, yeah. you might not quite classify, but you, you probably wouldn't consider somebody a builder that said that they wanted to do it for two hours a week because that wouldn't work for you if, to get there in six months. But on the other hand, you might, you might be happy to do it in two or three years. So that might work for you. So you might classify that as a builder and that's not wrong. None of it's wrong. Definitely. <sighs> definitely agree. It's just building differently. That's what. Um, definitely agree. Uh, Sophie's also asked, she has a builder. She wants to get to gold as builder. She has one main builder and then her mum as a placeholder. Would you recommend a strategy where she puts another builder under her to help her get to Premier Silver? That's me. So like, for, I've, so I've got, th sorry, I've got three builders. I've got, well, I've got um, three builders. Two of them have got three builders underneath them. And then I've got this other um, lady who's got two legs. Um, so would you, at that stage, be, I mean, would a strategy be that I would put somebody underneath that person who's got the two legs so that they can rank of answer or no? Yeah, great question. Um, again, I wouldn't say, excuse me, I wouldn't say that there's like a perfect answer for that. I think you definitely have to fill it out. Now, let's say that my, I have these, so I've got two legs that are pretty strong, right? They're in, in a good position and I've got one, one leg that's a little weaker. Um, if they're committed, right. And they're moving in the right direction, then I might definitely be willing to, to place somebody on their front line, right? I find a builder. It's beneficial for me and it's beneficial for them to place that person there. Um, again, I'm going to keep that enrollment because of uh, just in case, let's say the builder, I place that builder on their front line. I'm going to hold that in rulership to make sure that that person doesn't at some point surpass the person above them. Right. So I'm going to, as long as possible, hang on to that enrollment. Um, but yeah, definitely. I think you could definitely 
add somebody to their, you know, to their team, you know, as far as a builder goes, I think it depends on the situation. Did I, did I understand that correctly? Or was that, was I out in left field? Yeah, no, that's good. Thanks. Is that right? All right. Um, hi, Nathan. Hi, Nathan. Is it okay if I ask now the question? Yes. Cause my, yeah. um, hi, Sean. Um, hey. I'm really excited to be able to talk to you today. Um, yeah, basically you mine's a little bit confusing or complicated to a certain extent and it's not actually happened yet but it's something that I'm seeing that is very likely so I've got um, a potential elite and elite situation and then underneath somebody that's going to be premier now the second elite person ended up being the enroller of this person who's going to be premier quite okay. quickly which then okay. means that realistically because i'm not their enroller this would no, not be a qualifying leg for me yep. if the person above who is the enroller is a very very slow builder and not willing to add the hours that will enable her to get to premier i mean there's not really a solution or have you got any advice for that situation yeah definitely i mean there definitely is a solution so i mean i would if it's me, I would meet with the elite. Um, I would meet with the elite. I would ask, Hey, what's your desires? Like, where are you going? What do you want to accomplish? Let's say in the next six months, next three months, next year, where, yeah. where do you want to go as far as doTERRA is concerned? And if she's, she or he says, uh, man, I, you know, I enjoy the products, but I'm not too engaged as far as building. Um, yeah. you know, then my response is probably, well, you know what? Uh, let's say the guy's name is John that's underneath the premier's name is John. Yeah. You know, I might be like, well, John really needs support. Um, you know, if you're able to gift me that enrollment, I'm happy to support him and help him to build his business. And then when you're ready to build, we could look at getting that enrollment back to you. And and the chances of you being able to gift that enrollment back are pretty much a hundred percent. Okay. Okay. That's so, yeah, great. So you could take that's it, you what... could assure him, Hey, you know, I could give it back to you whenever you're ready. And yeah. from a financial perspective, um, let's say he's premier, you're able to support him, help him hit silver, gold, platinum. It's very beneficial for the per, the elite above him as far as unit level, as far as all that goes. Uh, it's very, okay. very beneficial. And so, again, I would – you want to obviously make it for them, right? It's all about them, what's yeah. beneficial for them. We don't want to be like, yeah, I need true. it. I want to rank advance, and you're not doing anything because then they're like, I don't want to give it to you. So definitely want to make it about <laughs> them. But, yeah, I would definitely uh, sit them down, talk to them, and try and get that enrollment for sure. Okay. So the, I, I, I sort of have in a, in a roundabout way without actually saying or mentioning any of these things coming up, um, just to gauge the situation and, and the, obviously this is something I'm sure many, many people experience, the things that are coming out of the mouth towards the actions are very, very different. So the, yeah, I definitely want to get to Premier, I want to get to Premier maybe this month or, or hopefully next month, and then the actions are not um, at all coordinating in, in that way at all so if I I think it would still work if I like you said verbalize it so it's more towards them um, I am completely supporting the person underneath and they they haven't done anything with them um, so that would probably work so thank you so much yeah yeah of Fingers course crossed. and again I wouldn't yeah, of course. I wouldn't feel bad, you know, taking it, obviously getting that enrollment. It, like I say, financially, most people, um, we had a discussion the other day in our office. Uh, most people, again, are that if they're, if they're continually saying, you know, I'm going to build, I'm going to build, and they're not doing anything. They're probably never going to do anything, not in a bad way, but just if that's not their yeah. desire, I won't. Now, again, obviously if they, if they get going, we definitely want to give it back to them because it's beneficial, right? If they get going, we're like, heck yeah. yeah, let's support you. Let's get you going. So we definitely don't want to Very throw good. them under the bus. We want to make sure we talk it through with them, yeah. make sure they understand, but yeah, get that enrollment. Cause again, unilevel, as you help that person build, it's going to help the elite earn more money, mm -hmm. um, which is obviously yeah. a good, definitely. Um, okay. Perfect. Thanks Catherine. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. Um, I would also add Catherine with that. It's also, um, it's a tricky one, particularly because they think that they are a builder still. Um, so them giving that they will feel like they're completely scuppered. So it's a diplomatic question to try and help them figure out what they actually want and see what they are really. Yeah. So yeah, that's that is quite. Um, Karen's asked, um, can you really give back an enroller? 
I have never heard of this in MLM. Once someone is in your team in a place, how can you change them? Um, yeah, good question. I think she might be being confused though with sponsor changes. And exactly. Exactly. Oh, I'm sorry, Sean. Do you just want to explain that then? Yeah, I can. Absolutely. Yeah. So a sponsor obviously is a person whose organization I'm in, correct? So my sponsor, so if Nate signs me up and puts me on his front line, he's my sponsor, correct? Now, if his upline, let's say Becky is his upline. Well, Becky is his upline. So let's say we'll use organization as an example. So Nathan signs me up. I'm on his front line. Okay. So if he wants to, let's say Nathan just decides, man, I don't want to do doTERRA anymore. Um, but I'm doing really well. So he wants to give my enrollment to Becky, right? So my enrollment doesn't change the structure at all, right? It just changes the name. Who's, who's there, right? Who the enroller is. It just changes the name of who the enroller is. It doesn't change the structure. So for an enroller change, it just, you would change it to help Becky rank advance. So if, she, if, if changing that enroller helps her rank advance and she has my enrollment and helps her go forward, then she could, uh, Nathan could potentially gift my enrollment to Becky. And then when Nathan's ready to go, we could potentially give it back to, to Nathan. And so it's not moving anybody out of organizations. So you're correct. We wouldn't move people out of people's organizations. That doesn't happen. Um, it's an enroller change, which again is, is not, uh, is not a structural change. Does that make sense, Karen? I don't know if that clarifies it all. Uh, we'll just we're more confused. We'll see if she says yes or not. Or awesome. wants clarification on that. Um, <laughs> Steve's asked what, what to do when you have three legs, but your fund line decides to quit LRP with an eye towards power three. Hmm. Yeah. So there's the option of an account transfer. So if they quit the power of three, they're probably willing to get out of the spot. Not always. Um, sometimes they just want to, you know, stick around in that spot and that makes it really tough. Um, and so, so again, that's, that, that makes it tough. So for, if they don't, if they aren't willing to work with you, there's not a ton of options. You're as far as the power of three goes, you're going to want to look deeper for rank and use somebody to rank with. Um, but most of the time, if they stop ordering, you can talk with them. And then there's a, what's called the account transfer. You transfer them out of the spot and transfer a brand new wellness advocate into the spot or a brand new wholesale customer into the spot. And so that person then takes over the team. And so then uh, that will help you out. And so there is the option of an account transfer. Um, outside of that, it gets pretty tough if the person's not willing to work with you. Okay, thanks, Sean. Um, Karen's also, she said, I've never heard of a um, sponsor change. The company accept this and how do you go about it? Yes, yeah, so sponsor changes are, are available in the first 14 days, right? So if I want to do a sponsor change, I can do a sponsor change in the first 14 days. Outside of that, we can't do sponsor changes, right? We do have an exceptions committee, um, but that committee doesn't approve like cross-line moves. Anything that, that would hurt somebody or pull volume from somebody, they won't do it. And so again, the exceptions committee is something different, but for, as far as sponsor changes, those are available in the first 14 days. So Nathan signs me up. He's got 14 days to move me to where he wants me to be. And so just a normal, normal deal. Nothing, nothing unnormal about that. And then the transfer. Yeah. Good question. So the transfer is just, uh, if again, if, if, if somebody's in a spot, so Nathan, he signed me up again, we're just gonna keep using that example. I'm on his front line and then I just decide I'm not going to order oils anymore. Nathan, I'm, I'm kind of done ordering the oils. Uh, got a lot going on in my life. He might say, well, Sean, um, you know, you're in a key spot. Is there any way I could transfer you out? You might use different wording, whatever you want to place it, pays it. Um, would you be willing to transfer out? And then Nathan would enroll a new person, a brand new person. We would sign the forms. He would enroll a brand new person. And that person would then take over my spot, not my account, but just my spot so that it doesn't, it gives Nathan more options to work with. So, so you can basically account transfer a brand new person into replace anybody okay and it has to be a brand new person has to be a brand new person and doTERRA pretty much always say yes to that sean always yeah unless there's like you know if they find where somebody's had mutual interest in like they've been involved in an account recently yeah if it's a brand new person going into a spot there really is not ever any reason they'll say no again unless there's something that's kind of hidden you know they've been involved with other you know, other accounts or, or there's just something that they find out. But if it's clean, meaning that it's a brand new person that doesn't know the person that's in the account and they just kind of take it over, then it's usually good to go. How long does it normally take? Oof, good question. <laughs> so it depends. 
if it, if it comes in between the first and the 15th, they'll wait until after the 15th to do the change because it affects commissions. So if we get, if you, if we get it on the third of uh, March, they'll wait until um, 15th, 16th or 17th to do the transfer. So generally it's about three to five days max. And then unless you, again, unless you submit it on the third, um, then they'll wait till after commissions run for February to do it. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Um, and last one on placements until we're going to do earnings in a second and then we can ask questions again. Um, can you get to silver if your third leg is under a placeholder who hasn't enrolled anybody and you've enrolled everyone in that leg? Yeah, as long as structure is good and the enrollments are in the right place. Does that answer it? Is that right, Nathan? I think is so. That... I don't quite understand the question, Deborah. If you are the enroller of that third leg, that placement holder, then it doesn't matter who's enrolled everyone underneath that. You just have to be the enroller of that one person. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so if you if that wasn't answering the question, just you can clarify that, Deborah, for us, sorry. Um, oh, that does, I think it does. Um, okay, there's a couple of questions there. We'll come to that in a second. I just wanted to go over the earnings for a silver, Sean. So what are the average earnings for a silver? So for a silver, again, these are going to have gone up a little bit because we've been introduced the empowerment bonus, right? Um, so just keep in mind that these are going to um, keep in mind that these these uh, include the very highest and the very lowest. I don't know if that makes sense. The highest amounts and the lowest amounts. Yeah. Um, so a silver is what's that? It's a medium. It's a medium. That's right. Yeah. So the silver is roughly about 1500 euros, maybe just a little more uh, on average. And so uh, right around 1500 euros. So what would that be? 1200 or so pounds, 1100, 1200 yeah. pounds. Yeah. So just remember that if you hit silver in like three to six months, you won't be on 1500 pounds. Yeah. Okay. It'd probably be more like five, 600 pounds. Um, yeah. Cause that's a medium figure. Um, and with that, though, Sean, with the, with the silver, what is that made up of out of the five, um, the five ways you get paid? Yeah, so it's going to be made up of your leadership pools. Okay, so your leadership pool, you're going to get one share for hitting silver. So if it's your first month hitting silver, you're going to have you're going to get one share for hitting silver plus an extra share for every personally enrolled elite. So as a silver, you have to have three elites all of them hit elite in the same month you hit silver we're just going to get confusing here in a sec if all of them hit elite the same month you hit silver you get four shares hopefully you guys followed that hope that wasn't too confusing so let's, let's again, just right. explain that again sean just so perfect they... yeah so if you look at the leadership performance pools you'll see those it's just under the silver gold and platinum if you look right under that it says leadership performance pool so silver gold and platinums are are included in the leadership performance pool so you'll see there's the little section that says number of shares. It, it has one, five, and 10. So that means that as a silver, when I hit silver in a month, I get one share out of that pool. And how if much I hit is gold, that? I get, go how ahead. How much is one share worth? Yeah, sorry I don't have it in pounds, but I'm going to say anywhere from 140 to 160 US dollars. Okay, we generally say about 100 pounds. Okay, 100 pounds, yeah, perfect. So let's say 100 pounds. So, And then under those numbers, it says one plus and so that just means and if you look down in the small writing it talks about it for every new personally enrolled elite that hits elite the same month that you qualify as a silver you get an extra share so if i have three elites go ahead nathan what do you mean by a personally enrolled elite perfect so if i if i hold their enrollment so so if i hold their enrollment i'm their enroller and they become elite in march and when I hit silver in March, then I would get an extra share. So if you hit, if you got a brand new person to elite, mm -hmm. and you hit silver that month as well, mm -hmm. you would get one share for being for that person hitting elite, mm -hmm. and you'd also get a share for being silver. Exactly. So you'd get two shares, so two hundred pounds. But the following month, that person may still be elite, and you're silver but you'd only get one share for being silver. You wouldn't get the extra share for them being elite again. Would you? Exactly. Exactly. So it's only the first month that they hit elite. So it's only the first month. So they might hit 
I might be premier in February and they hit elite in February, I wouldn't get their share, right? Mm -hmm. Then I hit silver in March, they hit elite again in March, but they've already hit elite for their first month. It has to be their first month hitting elite and then I have to be hitting silver to get it. So could you be premier, have three legs that don't hit elite, none of, none of them hit, have hit elite yet, and you go yeah. silver, so all three of them go elite in the same month that you go silver, could you get an extra share for every one of those elites? Exactly, so then you're gonna have four shares, right? So that, that does happen fairly often, and so then the silver might call us the second month they hit silver and say, hey, how come my check dropped so much? And that's yeah. exactly why, because then the second month they're only getting one share, right? All three of the elites are already hit elite, so they're getting one the next month. So they might have some questions as to why, why they're not getting paid. So, yeah. but you might have already had one person hit elite already. When you hit silver, that would mean you wouldn't get the bonus for that person that hit elite already. Correct. Yep. Exactly. Right? Okay. So just clarifying yep. it for everybody. Absolutely. Yep. So you got the leadership performance pool there. So again, I'm going to say. You're going to get the checks, you know, you made up some of that. And then you're going to have the empowerment bonus, bonus, which is fairly new. Nathan, did you say that you had that at about 120 pounds? About 150, I think. 150 pounds. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So that one's going to be a nicer bonus, a little more. It's you, you, can't get, you cannot get extra shares in it. You get one share. You earn that share by personally, you know, by hitting Premier or Silver and then enrolling one person, at least one person during the month with a 100 PV order. So their, their earnings are going to be made up of, again, an empowerment bonus share plus a leadership share. And then you're going to have a fairly good amount. Again, if you're, if you're still in your three to six months and you've hit silver, you're, you're going to be more fast start than you are unilevel. But if you've been around two to three years, you're probably going to be more unilevel than you are fast start. And so, and then here again, you're probably your 250, $250 uh, dollar bonus. Um, you're probably earning that. And so that's probably the majority. Uh, again, the, Depending on how old you are, it's going to either be fast start or unilevel is going to have a good chunk. And then a big chunk is going to be your leadership pools, the empowerment bonus pool, and then uh, unilevel and so forth. So you're probably earning, you know, retail profit, you're probably earning nothing. Mm -hmm. um, with your fast start bonus, you might be earning 300 pounds, let's say. Um, and obviously that depends on, depends on you, how many people you enroll and your builders. Your power of three, it could be fifty dollars. It might be two fifty. At silver and gold levels, I would say you're definitely not on 50, on the second on the third level yet. Would you say so, Sean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then you've got your uni level bonus, which depending on if you've been in the business only six months or less, or a year or less, the uni level is not going to be huge. But if you're you've been in the business a bit more than that. Uni level might be a bit higher. Um, would you mind just explaining? And that goes the same for gold, really. What what um what are the gold averages, Sean? Yes, gold averages. We're going to be more. Um, it's going to jump up a little bit. We're almost going to almost going to double pretty much for every rank as you go up. So anyhow, it's going to be right around three three thousand uh, US or I'm sorry euros three thousand euros for gold. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's as far as what it's made up of. You're you're not going to be power of three, um, power of three fifteen hundred. You're probably not. You know, mostly I would say if we look at majority, we're talking. You know, maybe our diamonds, blue diamonds, and presidentials uh, are probably those that have the fifteen hundred. Outside of that, um, most don't have it because it's a tough deal to to get it. And so, again, I say most. Um, but there are people that do have it and do get it on a consistent basis. They focused on it, so they do get it. But I wouldn't count on that in any of like anywhere from all the way up to platinum. I would say it's pretty rare that somebody has a fifteen hundred. Um, so if you're one of those people, you know, good job. It's pretty awesome. So yeah. So I'd say the breakdown in that is going to be again unit level is going to be probably a pretty good chunk because at gold you've probably been around a couple of years. You know, again speaking on average we're always gonna have people that are flying along but most people probably two anywhere from two to five years they've been around uh, doTERRA so a good chunk from coming from the uh, from unit level you know probably the 250 power of three most likely um, and then fast start is probably not going to be as much um, depending on how aggressive the person is being a lot of a lot of our golds you know they've hit gold and then they're they're still trying to transition kind of out of the old workplace you know at this point they're 
they've slowed down a little bit. And so I would say they're probably not as much faster as they are unilevel. And then you've obviously got the pools, which you're getting five shares. So about 500 pounds or so um, out of that. And so out of the 3000, I would say, you know, probably majority at this point um, in that, in that average we're looking at is probably going to be a unilevel. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Um, yep. We'll now have questions from everyone. So we've got um, just a couple more questions. Got a couple of questions here. Also, I forgot to say earlier, but we do have a couple of the um, account managers from the UK. We've got some brand new people that started this week. On just wanted to say hi, welcome, welcome to the training, and um, we look forward to working with you guys. So I know Ludo's on. Ludo, you on? Hi guys. Yes, of course I'm say on. Hi, okay, hi Ludo. Hello. <laughs> um, Ludo is the, di the diamond and above account manager, so um, you can all aspire to have Ludo as your account manager. <laughs> this That's is Ludo. Right. Yeah, we've got Ludo with the diamonds, and we've got Yvette. Yeah. yeah. And then we've got Yvette. Yeah, Yvette, so she'll work with Romania and Hungary. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Yvette. And Yvette, when did you start? <laughs> I just started. This is my third week. Three weeks ago, three weeks ago, yeah. Well, welcome Great. to the, welcome to the okay. team. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank and you. then we we have Victoria as well. She'll be in Russia, so she'll be helping with the Russian leaders. Hello. Hi, Victoria. Hello. Hi. Then Hi, I think. Victoria. Let me see if we've got. I don't know if Leslie, are you on? I don't know if I see. Leslie, I don't. All right, perfect. Yeah, so that's all of the account managers that we've got on this call. So, but welcome, we've got welcome, several guys. Others, these are the ones. So, yeah, there are a couple of others. Um, <laughs> so let's just uh, go back to a couple of questions. Um, uh, Nikki says, "Does the old person lose their LRP discount?" If I remember correctly with a transfer for the new person? That's a good question. That is a good question. So you are correct, uh, Nikki, in, in that that's how, we, yeah, that's how we used to handle it. So it's still generally, that's how it's gonna be. Um, but we're, we're most likely they're gonna be downgraded to a wholesale customer. They get to keep their account. And so that's how things have been functioning for about the past three to four months, um, maybe even two to three months. We've kind of tried to transition into that. So. When somebody transfers out of their spot, we've generally been allowing them to keep their keep their account. Um, we just don't allow them to upgrade for six months. And so they can keep buying doTERRA product, they can keep enjoying the product. Um, they just can't enroll anybody, so. And they've been keeping their discount, is that right, Sean? That's correct, yeah, so they keep their points, they keep their discount, they keep the, yeah, if they're at 30%, they continue to earn 30% on their LRP, so. Do you specifically need to ask doTERRA that, or will they do it automatically? Yeah, so when you send it in, you'll want to request it because they're still in the transition of doing it. And so I think they, they'll need the request uh, coming in because some people want to be terminated. The account transfer says, I, I agree to suspend my account, right? So generally that, that's what they're agreeing to. They want to suspend their account because they're done with doTERRA. That's why they're transferring out. So yeah, you'll just want to, when you send it in, just request to have, um, request for them to downgrade the current account holder to a wholesale customer. Um, and then they can, uh, and then they can transfer the other person in. And that way, it's kind of a win-win situation for both. Um, Cause most, most of the time I would say people want to keep ordering, right? That generally we want to get them out of the position because they, um, they aren't building, right? They're not really supporting, they're not carrying the weight, so to speak. Uh, so we want to get them out of the spot. So it's beneficial for us, but we also need to make sure that we get them, uh, get them taken care of. So if they want to transfer out of the spot, but stay as a wholesale customer to order the products, that's generally a good, good deal. So. Yeah. I only found that out about, a month ago, Sean told me that. So that's quite cool. Because yeah. <laughs> they used to not, they used to not be able to have their discount. Exactly. So it's always a bummer. Exactly. Um, uh, uh, Deborah said uh, we asked the question. Deborah asked the question earlier, so she's just clarifying. I think if the elite is a placeholder, do they need to have a hundred PV LRP or not? If they are qualifying leg, yes, they do. So if, if, if we don't have an elite under them that we're using to qualify, so I can, 
if if I've got somebody on my sixth level, right, and everybody above them is not placing orders, I can use them as a qualifying leg as long as I have their enrollment and they're in elite, right? And so if they're at the top, yeah, they have to have an order of 100 PB. If they don't have that order, they don't qualify as an elite, which doesn't qualify me as silver. So, um, so again, it doesn't matter, yeah, what they are as far as what we call them or the name we give them, but the person at the top who we use as a qualifying leg has to be qualified with an order. Does yes. that clarify? Does that make sense? I think so. So it's irrelevant to whether you think someone's a placeholder or not. So Terra, don't look at that. They don't. They don't care about that. They, it's the system will simply just look at it and go, does that person have a hundred PV LRP and who's the enroller? Yeah. To yeah. see who the ranking is. Um, that's how it works. Um, Correct. Uh, Martin's asked the hundred PV. Does it have to be a hundred LRP? Sorry, Martin. Could you just ask? Just tell us what that's relating to again. So it's, it's so I'll ask. Um, so basically, um, with hundred PV. Um, I know for fast start it has to be an LRP order, but for to get the unit level, does that have to be LRP or can it be a standard order? Standard order, any order. Is that right, Sean? That's it. Yep. Generally, we don't. Again, the, the reason there that's not really discussed is because um, it only makes sense for them to do LRP, right? Like if they're ordering on a monthly basis, generally it makes sense for them. But as a builder, it's good for me to know that it doesn't necessarily have to be an LRP, right? It's good to have that in my back pocket just in case um, an order's placed and it's not an LRP, then I know it's going to count. So, yeah, you're. But can it be a retail order? So, can you. I've seen some people put retail orders through somebody's account to get it to 100 PV. Yeah, exactly. So, a retail order of a. So, let's say somebody does an order of 50 PV. Okay. And could you top that up with a 50 PV retail order to make them do a 100 PV order? Exactly. Does that answer your question, Sophie? Yeah, thank you. Okay, but um, you said something about fast starts, that it has to be on LRP. Fast start orders don't have to be on LRP for you to earn money from them. Is that what you meant? To earn it. No, no, to qualify for fast starts, mm -hmm. the it has to be 100 PV LRP, does it? it well, to qualify for everything, it has to be. Yeah, so fast start, uh, again, Sophie, just, yeah, so so for fast start, it is it is specific to LRP, right? So unilevel, not necessarily, unilevel and rank, we don't, the system doesn't look if it's an LRP, right? It just has to be 100 PV. So your question as far as fast start, yeah, the fast start is specific to an L, uh an LRP, so it looks at the template. So it's important to remember that that when Fast Start runs every week, it's not looking to see if you've placed an order for the month, right? Because Fast Start pays every week, and you might not place your order till the 25th. So it's important to remember that Fast Start, when we run it, is going to look at your template to make sure it's above 100 PV. And then once the month's over, we'll make sure that you processed a 100 PV order, an LRP order, if that makes sense. Oh, good. I've learned something there. Does that make sense, Sophie? Yeah, thanks. I just needed it clarifying because okay. I got confused. No, that's cool. Easy, easy done. Um, thanks. Uh, Les says, when they transfer out, where do they go in the organization? Ah, good question. So when they transfer out, they stick with the same sponsor. So they just go sideline to the person that moved in. Does that make sense? Sideline? Does that, that word sense. work? Makes sense to me. But yeah. Maybe so, them. yeah. So they just have the same same exact sponsor. They just are in a different. They're just they're on the sponsor's front line. So their sponsor, they just they keep the same sponsor. They just move over a spot, and they don't have anybody under them. So they just move over a spot. The person transfers into their spot, keeps the down line. They just transfer out of that spot onto the front line and stay there. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Deborah yeah. said, I think it's relating to her question before. I thought the 100 PV order needs to be in the back office at all times to qualify. Deborah, can you, LRP. Can you come She's on? She's referring to LRP template, I think. Is she? Going to the other question? Yeah, uh, I, can, I can just... Um, yeah, do you want to just say it? Yeah, sure. Um, I was asking because like, I think um, Sophie had just asked about, could it be a standard order? 
if it's a standard order, it's not going to be on the template at all times. Yep. So the standard order that she was referring to was for um, for monthly commissions. So for monthly commissions, um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be an LRP, but obviously we're always going to teach them to do LRP, right? So, mm -hmm. but, but as far as Fast Start, which you're talking about, Fast Start's going to look at the temp op template, right? So it's going to look at the back office, if we want to call it that. So it's going to look at the template and then pay out. That's correct. And so it's not necessarily going to look at the PV I've placed, but rather the template. Make sure it's above 100. If it is, it'll pay you Fast Start. And then for monthly commissions, it doesn't have to be an LRP. But if you want to get the power of three, then they need to be LRPs, right? Um, so generally speaking, we teach LRP all the time. But it doesn't, it doesn't technically have to be. And as a leader, it's good to know that in case you have to place a retail order under somebody to help them qualify, if that makes sense. Right. So just to clarify, Deborah, and for everyone else, if basically, <laughs> if you were to place a 100 PV standard order, you would only get paid on union level and on your leadership bonus. If you were to qualify for any of that, you wouldn't get paid any fast start if you were due it, and you wouldn't get paid any power three. Is that that's right, isn't it, Sean? Perfect. Yeah, thank you for that. What it means is it means that you can place an order through somebody else's website to help you to rank where they may have missed. So, somebody, some people, we have it all the time, everyone will have it where somebody doesn't do their 100 PV or they don't do it fully, they might only do 75 PV. And it saves you having to call them up and do it, which you can do and get them to place it or whatever. But it just means that you can place it on their website and they will, and it counts as the order. Does that make sense? Oh, right. So you've actually gone to their retail website and order through that. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Just to clarify it. Yeah. It's their retail. So you just find a link to their retail site. So you don't, you don't actually have access to like their back office. You go to their, their retail website, the website that's just open to the public. You go on it, you go on it as if you were a, as a retail customer and you can place an order on their retail site, right? They're going to get commissions for it, but then it rolls up and counts as their personal volume. Oh, brilliant. Thanks for that. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, that, that, that helps you. Um, I just asked, can I swap somebody on my front line with their first line? Good question, Tony. This is a good question. So the swaps get tricky and they're a bit messy to explain. Um, I'll just do it real quick and, and uh, hopefully it's not too messy, but, uh, but let's say Nathan is again, Nathan's my upline and I'm his frontline. Right. And so I've built a silver organization. Okay. So I, let's say I have a, let's say Nathan has a silver organization, but Nathan's not doing anything. I'm on his frontline. I'm one of his elites. Okay, in that case, it, we would we could potentially submit an exception application form with a request to swap Nathan and I. Um, he would take over my team. I would in, I would inherit the uh, the silver organization, right? It's re, it's important to remember though when we do that that everything swaps, including enrollerships. So then I, I become the enroller of all of Nathan's people, the people he vis, he's enrolled, and then he becomes the enroller of all the people I've enrolled. So for instance, let's say Nathan's my upline, he's an elite. I've created a, a, a silver organization under him. It wouldn't make any sense for us to swap spots, right? Because then all of a sudden he inherits a silver organization. I get kicked out of my org organization. I'm the builder. And then I'm put into an elite organization. Um, so you just got to look and see, does it make sense, right? Is the person swapping, the person we want to actually build, if they're swapping into a spot, does it make sense? Do, do they inherit more than what they're giving up in essence? And so they're generally pretty hard to get put through. Um, swaps are not usually very pretty. They're not generally a approved, um, but there are times where they are approved when it makes sense. Um, can I just, uh, thank you for that. Um, can I just yeah. ask, um, in this case, and, uh, it's, it's, very, it's actually very easy because there is nobody else under them both. So my, my first line, I'm the enroller of my first line, um, she is not doing a thing, but she enrolled somebody of her friends uh, on her first line, and that person is actually building. They are both very good befriended, and they both would agree to just swap, and there's nobody else under them. Gotcha. 
Yeah, that's a well, good question. Uh, it's actually, uh, I think my gut feeling tells me um, that it's if they both agree to it and there's nobody else under them, then there is no really uh, loss for somebody. Sure. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, so you could definitely uh, submit something like that. It may have a good chance of going through, right, if it, if it is beneficial for everyone. Um, so what you'll want to do is you'll just want to send an email to Europe placements at doTERRA.com. So Europe placements at doTERRA.com and then just request to have uh, request for the, just let them know I want to do a swap. If I could just get the correct forms, they'll tell you what the process is and they'll be able to give you the forms and tell you how to move forward. Thank you. Charles. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much of for course. that. Um, of course. These, these just asked a question. Um, when placing customers, are you always trying to place them as far down as is possible? Um, so, so no is my answer. I don't know, Nathan, if you have a different answer. No, I've got a, I've got an answer for that. It depends. Yeah. So, for instance, for UV, probably. Um, for me, definitely not. I say so. I would say you don't want to be placing people underneath the level seven. Okay, so you really want to be looking at placing your customers between your fourth level and your seventh level, and all your builders and sharers between your first and third levels. Mm -hmm. So you really want to have a look at the placements training. There's an hour long placements training that I've done. If you have a look at that, that, that will explain all of that as to what you're trying to do there. Or just have a chat to Eva or Vanessa or or us. So the, the caveat here is replacements, chat to your upline. <laughs> like, yeah. as you're trying to get it, talk to your upline. Just, you know, we, um, Emily and Tim, they still call us. Vanessa still calls us. You know, we're still, placements aren't a sure thing. We still get calls and we still chat to our frontline all the time about, oh, should we put them here? Should we put them there? Because it's, it is the trickiest thing with doTERRA. Uh, would you agree with that, Sean? I'd agree. Yep, definitely. Again, with builders. So let's say I put a customer on my seventh level. If they if they decide they want to become a builder, I'm probably like Nathan said. I'm probably moving them up uh, third, fourth level. Because if they explode and they have a huge team, it's not the end of the world if they're on my seventh level. But it's the world's going to be a lot better if they're on my third or fourth level. Right. Okay. Does that answer your question, V? Uh, yeah, that does. Thank you. Okay. If you've got any more detail, then just yeah, just chat to. Chat to the online. Yeah. Um, uh, Sophie wants a, a, a simple explanation on dynamic compression. <laughs> you what? Sophie wants a, a, detail, um, a simple explanation on dynamic compression. A simple explanation. I don't know if there is one. Is there one? <laughs> <laughs> so, the simple explanation is. Uh, if somebody doesn't qualify, the system just kicks them out of the way and goes to the next person that does qualify. So for instance, the system pays out two, three, five, five, six, six, seven, right? As far as percentages go. Okay. So if I, if I have a person right here, that places an order for 100 PV, right? So they have a 100 PV order that they place right here. And then it needs, the system says, okay, I need to pay out the sponsor. So it goes up, right? It says, I need to pay everybody above it. I need to pay out all 7%. So it goes up to fine. And, and, and let's say their sponsor, the person right above them, is not qualified, right? So this person doesn't have an order. The system says, okay, obviously that person doesn't qualify. Let's get them out of the way. Let's find the next person that does have an order and that does qualify for that percentage and pay them. And so with compression, the way it works is it just compresses people that don't qualify and pays people that do qualify. And so... So it's just gonna, it's gonna potentially pay on, instead of levels, I always tell people, don't worry about levels, just talk about percentages. So in order to earn the 2%, what do I have to be, right? What rank do I have to be to earn that? What rank do I have to be to earn the 3%, the 5%, the second 5%? Just know what, what level you have to be to earn that, and then just follow the order, go up from the order, and then see who qualifies. If people don't qualify, they just the system kicks them out of the way, goes to the next person, right? So then the levels become irrelevant. Um, that's just a quick one, and, and it's probably not helpful. <laughs> so just as an example, just a cool example, that if you, if you had one leg and it was premier, 
and you had it all the way you had people doing 100 pv all the way down to your 20th level there would be 13 levels of seven percent that you would get isn't that right sean that's correct assuming that yeah assuming there's an elite that's picking up right so you'd have to have like a perfect structure as far as an elite picking up the first six percent so that means the premier picks up the second six percent which allows me to pick up the seven if it's a premier then an executive right that means the premier is picking up the first six percent i'm picking up the second six percent right so it gets tricky if you're looking at your organization and trying to figure it out exactly it gets pretty tough to to know exactly what's going to happen but if you follow it up you'll see basically, ranks basically with uni level trust the system yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i remember in the early days trying to figure it out and counting it all and then after that i was just like i trust it yeah it's fine <laughs> um ar balance what does that stand for correct yeah so so real quick just to sophie i see her her, her comment there um just real quick as far as that comment yeah again best what's best for me is just kick out the level part so the level becomes irrelevant because you're not going to get paid it's not always that you get paid seven percent on people on your seventh level just kick that out the window don't look at levels just look at percentages you'll be good to go and there is a lot of confusion on it so it's all right yeah sorry nathan what was the other question uh, actually it got answered so that's not a problem ar balance is accounts receivable um kevin's asked what exactly constitutes a level is it a person or a qualified person? Good, good question. It's a person. Yep, so level one could be full of people that don't order, right? Level two could be filled with people that do order. Level three could be filled with people that don't order. So that's a good question. So a level is just where people are. So no matter if they order or not, just where they are structure-wise. Okay, thank you, Sean. Uh, Peter, did you have a question? You've got your hand raised. I think you've had it raised for like 20 minutes. <laughs> or was that an accident? He's still there. Um, any questions from anybody else? We'll let Sean go in two minutes. But does anyone want to ask anything? Can I just ask something about, if you've got a placeholder on your front line and you've got a couple of builders under them, and you decide to close the placeholder account, do one of the builders flip up into their place or do both of the builders that were under the placeholder, how, do, how does it work? Does everything shift up one level? Yeah, that's a great question. A really good question, especially if you're, obviously if you're going for ranks and so forth. So if I've got um, somebody that's not building, right? So I don't know if that's what you guys are referring to placeholders, I'm not too familiar with it, but let's say, the placeholder um, by saying that it's just somebody that's not building right so it's just somebody that's just not not engaged right in the business so they're just not doing anything yeah they're happy to get out of the spot if i ask them to maybe it's a friend or something to that extent anyhow that person yeah so let's say that person their structure under them is a silver structure right so that means they have at least three elites mm -hmm. in that in that circumstance i'm going to want to transfer somebody into that person's spot because i want to make sure the structure stays intact now let's say that one of the people under them is a silver, one of them's a premier, and then another is just got a bunch of random volume, maybe an elite. In that circumstance, I might want all of those people to roll up to my front line. If I do, then I'll just have them go inactive. Once they fall off, everybody rolls up. Then it gives me some extra legs to work with, plus I have this silver. So it kind of depends on the structure and what my goal is. And so if I need the structure to stay the same, I want to transfer somebody in. If, it, if I want that pe those people to be on my front line, then I'll have that person fall off and they'll roll up to my front line. So to answer your question, nobody, nobody will just automatically go into that spot. The, the structure will all roll up um, unless we transfer somebody into the spot. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. But you have to, but to, you'd have to transfer somebody brand new into the spot. That's correct. Yeah. So it would have to be a brand new person. And so again, you're going to probably want to do some, some sort of testing. My, my thing again, if I'm going to transfer somebody into a position, my thing is let's ha let's have them have a class right mm -hmm. before we do it and so i would say you know let's see if they can teach a class within the next week before we you know tell them we're going to transfer them into a spot and if they're able to get 20 people to a class then we can feel pretty confident that they're going to be able to do the business side because yeah. again the toughest part is getting people to classes so but yeah so it would need to be a brand new person there's probably going to be some kind of contractual uh 
talk that goes on, you know, like as far as here's what we expect of you. If yeah. those things don't happen, then here's the expectation. Again, not that that, if it were brought to, brought to doTERRA, um, that's obviously not going to have a way a lot. We're going to look at who own, who owns the account and so forth. But between the two of you, um, obviously it helps to have some kind of contract between the two of you that says, yeah, here's the expectations. And if these aren't met, then here's what we're going to do. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mom's also mentioned the option of, so it doesn't have to be, if you want to transfer somebody into uh, somebody's place, it's wellness advocate. It doesn't have to be a brand new person. It can also be a wholesale customer. That's true. So, yeah. so you can exactly. use the option of customer after 90 days. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. So does that make sense to everybody? That, yeah. That's a pretty cool thing that you can actually move a wholesale customer into a position that you want. So you can test somebody out, you can sign them up and you, they can use the oils and then you can transfer them into a position later on if you want to. You just cannot transfer another wellness advocate into another wellness advocate position. Um, I'm not turning lies down, my Sean. You what? I'm not turning lies down, man. You what? <laughs> no, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I know I'm not. I know I'm not. Um, uh, what what makes some people drop off your back office and some not? I have some people who haven't ordered for ages still there, and then someone as soon as they reach twelve months not ordering they disappear. Perfect, good question. Most of the time, if they don't fall off, um, it's because they have a credit card that just has like an expired date on it, so it runs. It, it's set up on their LRP template, so it runs every month and then deletes every month. And so because it's running the order, we delete, we delete accounts at the end of the month. And so that, that order is still at a status one because we don't delete status one orders until the 10th of the following month. And so it's still gonna have a status one order on it looking like it's gonna place an order. So in that circumstance, just email placements and say, hey, I have these accounts. They've been inactive over a year. Can you please terminate them? And they'll just terminate them for you. All right. Yeah. Brilliant, Sean. Anyone got anything desperate they want to ask the Oracle? Well, thank you very much, Sean, for coming on tonight. Um, yeah. Uh, and enjoy the rest of your time in England. Uh, will do. Will yeah. do. So appreciate yeah. it, guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you. Sean. Yeah, um, you got it. And it's lovely to meet all of the, our account managers. So thank we look forward to working yes. with you all. Yes. Thank yeah. you, guys. See you guys. See you, Ludo. Thank you. See you, everyone. Bye. Good night. Bye. Thank you. All right. Come back when it's sunny, Sean. Hey, exactly. <laughs> yep. Come back when it's sunny. If he comes back, it's going to be like this every other day. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's only been two days it's it's sunny. I was like, I was starting to get a little depressed. But oh. we're good now. There was, the sun came out today. It was a good day. So <laughs> good to go. England, man. It's yeah. been awesome. It's always good. The people.